chunky bow. It's got a soft tip, but a stiff backbone. This is what we use inside the uh, the tube jigs. Nice. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. This one's at least a better quality one. There he goes, doubles. Got that hookup right on camera, Andrew. <laughs> you just chunky bro. That's a pretty good sized fish. Good looking little fish. Junky bro. Chunky bow. Well, he's getting a hook jaw on him too. Real pretty one. There we go, a real pretty fish. Done? Yeah.
That's crazy, they're hitting it on the paws. Oh yeah, dude. Is it a brown? Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, good looking bow. Nice. All right, ladies and gents, I want to take a quick break from the action to show you what I'm doing out there. I'll start with the rod and reel I'm using. And this is finally the katana. There it is. Holy moly. Dear God, it's beautiful. This is the new katana that came out. This is the flagship rod for katana rods. Uh, the K1, the K4, and the K5 that I've used in the past videos were basically just custom prototypes to get to this one. And uh, it's the best of all three worlds. Uh, if I had to describe it, I'd, I'd say it's a good mix between the K4 and the K5. Uh, you can drop shot with this rod, uh, but I, I mainly use it for uh, mini jigs this time of year, especially in the Sierras, because it's tough to drop shot, as, as you've probably heard in some of my other videos. Uh, but it's a, it's a moderate fast action. It's seven foot six. Uh, Tennessee handle. I believe you might be able to get it in split grip in the future, uh, but it's got the Tennessee handle on it. Uh, the crazy thing is, is this thing is even a hair lighter than the other custom katanas. It's it's super light. And uh, for a reel, I've got this uh, Vanquish 1000 on here. Uh, and, and this combo is just, it doesn't weigh anything. It's, it's awesome. I can't say enough good things about it. Uh, I got it right for the Sierra trip, and uh, uh, fortunately in that trip, we caught a ton of fish, and since then, uh, I've caught a ton of fish with this, this rod and, and reel setup, and it's just awesome. Uh, the uh, line I got on here is a Sinister Strand 4-pound uh, premium fiber braid. I run that up to about a 5 to a 6-foot liter of Runkle Power Fluoro and 5-pound, and I attach it with a double uni knot. Now, uh, let's go to the bench. I'll go over some of the jigs, the, the colors that are working, and uh, how to rig them up. All right, guys, here are some of the, uh, the baits that were working well out there. Uh, this first uh, mini jig is a brand new one. This is Pink Smoke. Uh, really, really cool color. It was really doing a lot of damage out there. This, this one was really hot all throughout the trip, no matter which lake we were at. Um, you saw I got a lot on uh, this one. This is Bluegill. Another really, really good natural looking uh, bait. I mean, honestly, the pink smoke is, is fairly natural looking, especially when the fish go on the spawn. They get that, uh, that pinkish uh, orange color to their skin, some of them. Uh, so this one will look real natural. Uh, later in the day, uh, I was doing real good with uh, Mardi Gras. Uh, usually when the sun's high and uh, uh, the day gets late, I'll switch to a real dark color uh, like this or El Diablo, and that usually works well. And then in the mornings, I was doing very well with uh, this new one, Goldfish, with the gold and the uh, uh, real sparkly white on it. Uh, real, real good bait in the morning. Now, uh, the uh, lead heads, especially for the jigs, typically you're going to use two different sizes, a 32nd and a 16th. And you can see the 32nd's the small one, 16th's the bigger one. But up here in the Sierras, uh, we're typically using uh, the 16th ounce or 1 16th, I should say, uh, on our jigs because of the, the deep water. So I'll show you how I uh, slide these in these tubes and it's, it's very simple. You can either start with the eye of the hook here and slide it through the, the bottom of it so it goes right in the opening and carefully push that tube on there so you can see the eye of the hook is kind of uh, popping out there uh, so you need to be very careful not to tear the jig so you just slowly inch it on there until it's all the way at the top and once that leads at the top I just use my thumb and push it right through so it ends up looking something like this now there's another way to do it that a lot of guys like to do and that's if they want to tie on their jig and they want to change it on the fly you can start with the hook end in the same area where this this eye of the hook's gonna pop out. You just estimate about where that is, lightly pop that uh, hook through there and carefully slide the tube of the jig around the bend of the hook. And then when it gets to the lead, slowly work that lead in through that tiny hole. And because these are made of rubber, they'll expand around it and if you're careful, comes out looking just like that. So there's two ways to do it. Now, these are the ball heads that we use 
here's a 32nd and a 16th. Typically I use the 16th, like I said, um, and these are more designed for the Spartan minnows and our worms. Like you use these on these ball head worms or the inch worms. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I'll go down to a 32nd and a, um, a Spartan minnow. Uh, if I know the fish are there and uh, uh, the bites a certain way, uh, but that's very rare. Typically I'll always stick with the 16th, whether it's a ball head and a minnow or these, uh, these mini jigs. Okay, now uh, why are we fishing a 16th ounce uh, instead of a 132nd ounce? Because uh, I know uh, those of you that are fish jigs, uh, you understand that you only go slow and with a 32nd you can go much slower than with a 16th because it's going to sink a lot faster, right? Well, uh, there's a couple reasons for it. Uh, the, the main reason up there is depth of water. Uh, most of the lakes up in the Sierras are pretty deep. Um, and, and the fish are not going to be right on the surface typically. They're going to be down a little bit and they're going to be uh, working drop-offs. Because of the depth uh, of those lakes, uh, there's a lot of drop-offs and uh, trout are predators. So they're going to hide around those drop-offs and try and pick off bait fish and, and small aquatic creatures. So you're going to want something that's going to get down into the water column uh, uh, in an expeditious manner uh, uh, to get to them. The other reason is wind. Uh, up in the Sierras, it's 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 windy. It's the mountains. These lakes, some of them are former glacial lakes, and uh, they're in in uh, valleys of these mountains. And in the afternoon, the wind uh, kicks up, and uh, it's no reason to go home. If it gets windy, you can still fish. The fish will still bite. So uh, what do you do? You gotta gotta size up your weight a little bit so you can cast out. And on top of that, lots of times, uh, even if the wind's at your back. You can cast a 32nd out quite a good distance, but what will happen, especially with braid and some of this real light mono, um, it'll, it'll the wind will catch the line and it'll act kind of like a kite and it'll hold your line up above the water and your jig, your 32nd won't fall fast enough and it takes forever to get down into the strike zone. As soon as you start working it back, it comes out, out of the strike zone. Where the 16th, uh, uh, even with the wind, you have a better shot at uh, getting it out there and letting it sink down to where the fish are and start your presentation it doesn't pull itself um, out of the strike zone and and that's basically what it what it is it's it's pretty simple uh there are times however rare uh i will size down to a 30 second usually a 30 second ball head on a spartan minnow um uh, the spartan minnows are obviously bigger than a mini jig and they're a little more dense so they do sink a little bit, but I can give it a much slower presentation. So sometimes if the wind conditions are right, I know the fish are there and they stop biting the 16ths, I'll throw out a 30 second ball head and a Spartan minnow. And sometimes that does the trick. Uh, but 99% of the time it's a ball head, 16th ball head on a minnow or a 16th uh, mini jig weight on a mini jig. Uh, if you're up in the Sierras, that, that's a real good, good rule of thumb to, to go by. Now, uh, got a new toy. Uh, I'll show you this. I ended up getting the, uh, an underwater drone. Uh, really cool piece of equipment, a uh, really fancy piece of equipment. Uh, and I'm still learning how to operate it, but it's got a 4K camera up here, lights, uh, the whole deal. Um, so you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this in the future in the videos, uh, so we can see the fish and, and what they're doing and where they're hanging out and, and why they do what they do, hopefully. Uh, so we're going to go to some underwater uh, footage. I got a gold lake with this and uh, see what we can learn. Hey guys, let's see what we got. Oh, there's the bottom of my kayak. So I'm right below it. Let's see if we can find the bottom. Oh, there's a trout. And there's some, some of the uh, underwater weeds there. Uh, they seem to be hanging out right above me. There's another one. And uh, they're, they're more towards that uh, reed bed and I'll show you in a minute let me see what else there's a bottom but you can see it, it drops off fairly quickly it goes out into kind of nothingness right there and they're up in the shallows because uh, they probably don't feel as safe from predators there's more of the seaweed that's down there there's another trout off in the distance and I'm kind of right on the drop off here. And you can see he's heading back into the shallows. And one thing interesting, they don't seem to be too scared of the drone. They're, they're you know, it's just slowly swimming away from it, just kind of keeping their distance. Here's a couple of nice trout, good shot. 
but uh, as you can see they're hanging out pretty shallow for the most part they're, they're just riding that uh, that corner of the drop off like I was talking about earlier I'm going real shallow there's another trout there's another trout out there in the distance I'm gonna follow this guy around a little bit and this is kind of just what trout do. They don't really hold in one spot. They kind of hold in an area and they, they just swim back and forth and do circles. Now here's a whole school of them. And as you can see, they're just, just a foot or so off of, uh, off of the weeds there, just looking for food. Kind of just cruising around. They do these big long circles and, and look around. As you see, as we get out deeper, there's, uh, there's not much at all out there. Right now, I wanted to give that, that footage a little bit of context. Uh, as you can see in this clip, uh, where I was was right next to a, a wall of reeds, basically. Um, uh, so you couldn't access it from the shore. And where I'm sitting there, it's, it's about probably uh, five or six feet deep, right under, right next to those reeds. Now, why are the trout there? Well, they're there for protection. Um, they feel safe against that reed wall. Um, like lots of times uh, you fish near a dam or a, uh, cliff drop off and go straight into the water. Lots of times the, the, the fish will hang out there, the trout will hang out there because they feel safer from predators because they, they only have to look so many directions, not all directions, to see what's coming at them. Uh, and especially, you know, birds too. Um, they have a hard time uh, uh, getting into an area like that and scooping them up if they're up towards the surface and, and hiding from us. Um, uh, anytime I find reeds or bushes along a shoreline and, and shore folks can't access it i'm out in the yak or the boat i will make a few casts there because uh the trout can see us they know we're there uh so they will go to in front of a bush or a tree or, or an area of reeds where they know we can't get at and they feel a little bit more safe uh so that's that's why they're there uh and those are places to look for especially if you're out in a boat tube or a kayak um is is fish spots uh, where those conditions are present and where, where shore folks can't uh, access it because uh, uh, eight times out of ten, I'd say, uh, there's probably some fish cruising around in that area. A nice size one. The toad for a spade stalker. Clear of his line. Yeah, 
there you have it uh, uh awesome time up in the sierras uh uh love fishing up there and I'm, I'm so happy the season started uh i plan on going up there a lot this summer so uh stand by for a lot of videos <laughs> um uh, a couple things uh uh the, the the biggest question i get asked is is what baits do i recommend when you're fishing up there and uh, uh, it, it's hard to answer because, as you saw in the video, the, the, the fish that were shown, they were caught on a variety of different colors, right? Um, uh, so what I tell people is uh, use uh, colors that, that, that you like. Um, like, I, I have luck with certain colors that I have confidence in. Esteban uses different colors and the other pro staffers use different colors as well. Um, uh, so it, it's hard to say, like, I'll tell you the colors that I like, but, um, uh, doesn't mean the others won't work. They absolutely will. Um, so what I usually tell people is get some natural colors. Usually, uh, up in the Sierras, the water's very clear, uh, but the trout are exactly the same as the trout down here. So, uh, typically I'll start off with a natural looking color, like, you know, your caramel apples, your baby brown trout, bluegill, uh, those kind of things. Um, and then get yourself some, some very uh, light colors or whites, you know, like uh, uh, Colombian Bam Bam or a uh, uh, white hologram uh, for the mornings or when it's overcast. And then the afternoons, I, I go to a dark color like uh, Mardi Gras or Blackout or, or some of these are El Diablo is a great one. Um, uh, so if you have some of the colors in, in that general uh, genre, if you will, uh, you'll be just fine. Um, there are certain colors like say uh, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, the peanut butter and jelly minnow uh, fished on a 32nd uh, works real good for me at Lundy Lake sometimes when the wind's not blowing. Uh, but typically, like I said, 99% of the time I fish a 16th. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, I know Esteban and Art from the team, uh, they've done real good on uh, Big Stick at Lundy. And Big Stick is bright yellow and orange and it looks nothing like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fish are fish uh, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and each day when we go out to the water it's a mystery no matter what lake we are wherever we're fishing up there or down here because uh, uh, we know the color that worked last time isn't necessarily gonna work this time so we got to figure it out so when we start fishing uh, if there's a bunch of us we all try and fish different colors to see what they like um, and that really helps if, if you're by yourself or just two of you there um, uh, you just got to experiment. Give it a few casts. If, if uh, there's nothing there, uh, then move on. If you really think the fish are there, if you're getting like nibbled on or you're seeing them rise, start changing your colors and then change your presentation speeds. Uh, sometimes, uh, typically you want to go slow. Sometimes you might want to go fast, a little bit faster. That might turn them on. It's very rare, but it might. Uh, start doing some pauses. Start working it on the bottom of, of the water column. Start working on the top. Um, these are all the things that, that I do and the other pro staffers do uh, uh, to figure out what they want because they will change their mind uh, within within minutes or an hour sometimes and be onto something completely different, go to a different part of the lake, different part of the water column. Uh, so you just got to experiment. There's no uh, hard and fast rule for any of this. Uh, and that's really to me part of the fun uh, is trying to figure them out each day. And, and uh, I always like to be try or try to be the first one to figure it out, you know what I mean? Because uh, to me, that's that's part of the fun of fishing because uh, it's a mystery out there. Uh, so don't get frustrated. Just keep trying different things. And uh, you may find something that gets hot and uh, you'll be the only guy catching fish. <laughs> All right, guys, the good people over at True Dave sent me out some, some waders and some deck boots to try out. And the waders that they sent me are these, uh, these breathable uh, stocking foot uh, fly fishing waders. And uh, they are actually really nice for the price. I, I really enjoyed wearing them. Uh, they're made of a, a durable four-layer nylon Oxford fabric. 
uh, which keeps you obviously uh, uh, dry uh, in both ways because they are waterproof and they are very breathable. They have uh, uh, something called patented stitching, like in the front and the back, it has these, these stitches, I don't know if you can see it, um, but they stitch it in such a way that it gives you more uh, uh, comfort and flexibility, when you, especially when you're kneeling down. Uh, the knees have uh, four layers of extra fabric in them, so uh, uh, those of you that wear waders, and uh, you know it sometimes when you're changing your rigs, you might get, uh, get down on a knee, uh, and you don't want to obviously put a hole in your waders. Uh, so, so they put a little extra reinforced fabric inside there. The booties are, whoop, the booties are 3.5 millimeter neoprene and they're uh, coated with an anti-microbial uh, micro, anti <laughs> coating uh, to keep uh, uh, bacteria down because obviously these things can be stored wet if you don't dry them out. But one thing that was very interesting about, it's probably the coating on these is it was extremely easy to take off my wading boots afterwards these things just slid right out uh which was really cool because uh, i know at the end of the day when I'm, i've been fishing for 12 hours 14 hours uh and taking off the waders is difficult when you're tired especially the boots because you don't want to bend over and you're standing out in, in uh, the elements uh, i was able to practically just kick my boots off uh really really cool um they have uh, gravel guards like most waders with a clip that will clip onto the end of your boot to keep the gravel out. Uh, obviously a uh, wading belt, which is very important for safety. Uh, uh, I get stories all the time of, of friends and, and subscribers that, that say, you know, they went down in the water and the wading belt really helped uh, get them out of the water quickly because when the, your waders fill up with water, uh, you're going to weigh uh, more than double your body weight and uh, uh, this belt can really uh, save you and uh, keep your head above water, so always wear your wading belt. Uh, it has uh, crisscross suspenders, which are uh, elastic, very comfortable. Uh, the waders themselves, um, they're a bit baggy for my size, but uh, it's not a fashion show out there and they were extremely comfortable. Uh, but if, if I had any complaint, that would be it. It's just kind of baggy, but um, uh, other than that, uh, I didn't care about that much. Uh, uh, they're great, great waders, and I believe they retail for, for just under a hundred bucks. So uh, a really good deal if uh, if you want to get into wading and don't want to spend a bunch of money. Uh, but these are a really, really good pair. I used them all the way through the Sierra opener, and I even used them in Utah, as you can see in this clip. Uh, the whole time I was up there, I didn't even break out my, uh, my fancy waders. And uh, uh, up in uh, the Sierras, it was in the low 30s. And uh, Utah, one of the mornings, I think it was 14 degrees. And these keep, kept me just as warm as my, uh, my fancy waders. So uh, really, really impressed with them. Um, they have a waterproof pocket up here with a zipper. So you need to put your phone or something in there. As long as the zipper's closed, it's uh, waterproof. And then they have one of my favorite pockets, the, the reach through pocket here. I always put a hand warmer in here or something when my hands get cold. Uh, but that's always super important to me is this pocket. That's just a feature that I love in waders. Because <laughs> my biggest kryptonite is cold hands when I'm fishing. Because uh, my hands are too cold, I can't fish. And I'm just standing there holding a the hand warmer, you know. But uh, uh, having a pocket like this really, really helps. Let's move on to the, uh, the deck boots. I was really surprised with these dudes because these are, in my mind, are more designed for uh, fishing on the cattle boats out in the ocean um, or uh, uh, any kind of boat you are know, trying to keep your feet warm because obviously they're, they're uh, just a waterproof shoe. They aren't, uh, they're only about 6.5 inches tall. Um, but they have an anti-slip sole, vamp webbing on the side, and I guess that's uh, for ease of uh, uh, donning and doffing or take, putting on or taking off. It's got these pull-up straps, which are really cool. But one of the really cool features I, I discovered was this little uh, little bump back here, and it's a it's a called a backstop. And what you do is take them off. You just step on your uh, your heel on this little stuff, and it pops right off. And then you take your sock and pop the other one off. But the biggest thing I I, I fell in love with these things is is not only are they super comfortable, but I started using these as my pre and post waiter uh, shoes. So when I'm going to the lake. Uh, instead of putting on regular boots or, or tennis shoes, I just put these on, they slip right on and they're super comfortable. And then, uh, especially when I take off my waders and I'm tired and my feet hurt, I just throw these on and uh, uh, away I go. And they are very, very comfortable. I was, I was really impressed with these and I never thought 
of buying this kind of boot for uh, 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 after wading or, or the type of fishing I do. And uh, the other cool thing is, is lots of times I like to uh, clean off my boots in the water. Well, these are waterproof, so I can go down to the water's edge, wash off my boots, get all the gravel off them, and I don't have to worry about getting my shoes wet. Both products, just awesome. I am super impressed with them, uh, and I'm going to use them uh, in my regular rotation. It won't be a, a one-time video and they go on the shelf. Uh, uh, I'm gonna continue to use uh, uh, both of these things uh, quite a bit. Uh, really, really awesome stuff. And, and the folks over there uh, gave us a uh, discount code. So you can get 15% off all of the True Dave products. If you just type in code CSPANKER at checkout, you'll get 15% off. I'm gonna add them to my, uh, my link tree and uh, I'll have all the information in there. So when I put the QR code up here, just click on that, go to the link tree, and then it'll have the site and uh, instructions on what to do to get your 15% off. So go check them out. Uh, uh, really good gear, uh, really good budget gear. Uh, this stuff is very inexpensive, in my opinion, uh, for what you get. So, uh, so definitely give them a look. So with that, if you want any of the uh, fine products I, I use on this channel, there's a uh, QR code right up here that'll take you to a link tree. Uh, so if you want any of the Golden State Fishing Custom Baits, the Katana Rods, or the uh, uh, Waterland Sunglasses, and additionally on there, uh, the uh, High C products, uh, they have a permanent 15% uh, off discount code that'll be in this uh, QR code or the link tree. And uh, of course, True Dave, uh, they gave me a 15% discount code for all of you guys. Uh, so you can use that. So, so definitely uh, give all these products a look. Uh, they're great products or I wouldn't use them. So always remember to uh, like, share, and subscribe to the videos. It, it doesn't cost you a thing, and it really helps uh, helps me and the channel out. Uh, uh, it's a lot of work uh, uh, and expense uh, going out to these places, even though I love it. Uh, uh, and I want to keep doing it as, as best I can. So uh, so uh, if you guys do your part, that really helps. And uh, if, if you don't like the content, I appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, coming up, uh, lots of Sierras. Uh, I may go back to the mid, uh, take the kayak up there. Uh, still working on the kayak. I'll, I'll uh, be getting the, that kayak video out to you uh, very soon. I'm just uh, figuring out exactly how I want it set up, and I'm getting close. And uh, with that, I uh, hope to see you guys out there in uh, tight lines. Uh -huh.